Abuse is not always physical abuse. Abuse comes in many forms, such as mental abuse, spiritual abuse, course of control, and much more. Micah's Law will acknowledge all abuse. This will protect all people who are still fighting their fight for justice. Please go to www.justiceformica.com. Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Coffee with Crime podcast. I'm Brittany. Happy to have you here. I hope that everybody is doing well today. So today I have another update on the Micah Francis case. I do plan on continuing to follow this case until there's some sort of justice and maybe further on. We'll see what happens. But I plan on following this case because I am deeply invested in it. So John Paul, John Paul Miller, he continues to talk badly about Micah even after she's passed. And, you know, the authorities, they've never really done their job in protecting Micah or bringing her any sort of justice. And so the public has really made a lot of effort to help push getting Micah justice. You know, she tried to get help so many times and she was failed just as many times. When someone's trying to do everything right and reaching out for help, advocating for themselves and they don't get it from the authorities not her family but from the authorities what is a person supposed to do and so i think that's why the public has been so invested in this because we see how much micah was let down i actually just covered another story on my channel here it's about lauren johansson it's absolutely terrible Uh, again she is another victim where the authorities completely failed in protecting her from her abuser, Bryson Rivers. If you're interested in it, I just shared it. The stories really do kind of mirror one another in the sense that they are two young, talented, beautiful women that were taken from this earth too soon because one, the authorities and the people in power failed them and two, they had abusive men in their lives really is what it comes down to. But yeah, today's video is about Micah and our continued fight to, of course, bring justice for Micah. Of course, I want to, before I get into it, remind you guys that everything is pulled from public sources. This also includes some of my own opinions as well. I always recommend you do your own research, form your own opinions. And as of now, John Paul Miller has not been convicted of anything somehow. So, you know, everything is alleged at this time. Just keep that in mind. I have to say that. But okay, so let's just get into today's discussion. So five days ago now, as I'm recording this, the Francis family took to Facebook and they posted an extremely impactful video thanking the community for their support and reminding those that want to help in the fight for justice for Micah different ways in which they can do so. The reality is that monetary support is very much needed from the Francis family as they continue, you know, the legal battles in her honor, uh, such as having her last name changed back to her maiden name, also helping to push Micah's law into action, which would help protect others from the various forms of abuse just outside of like physical abuse, such as like coercive control, which we know that allegedly John Paul used against Micah. And so, you know, these, these legal battles that the Francis family is taking on definitely does require monetary support. Hello, I'm Micah's father, Michael Francis. My name is Angelita, and I'm Micah's mother. Hello, my name is Destiny, and I am Micah's oldest sister. Hey, everybody. My name is Nate, and her older brother and only brother. Hey, y'all. I am Sierra Francis. I am Micah's sister. Hi, everybody. My name is Anna. I'm Micah's younger sister. Hello, my name is Abby Francis. I am Micah Acacia's younger sister. Micah selflessly dedicated herself to her community. We are seeking the support of the community. No matter the initial ruling of her untimely death, we are standing firm in her place and saying no more. The fight for justice for Micah is far from over and very much in the early stages. Your donations go directly towards funding that fight and the many lawyers that are involved on this case. Your donations are not only helping the civil side of this fight, but that it will also help in spreading awareness surrounding the proposed Micah's Law. This law is not gender specific and is related to many areas of abuse. Abuse is not always physical abuse, which South Carolina currently only acknowledges physical abuse. Micah's Law will acknowledge all abuse. Please go to www.justiceformica.com. The community has helped lift us up in moments that we could not have gotten through 
otherwise on our own. We thank you so much. From the bottom of my heart, thank you. Thank you, and God bless. We are very, very grateful for everything y'all have done for us, and we cannot express that enough. So thank you. Thank you very much for everything everybody's doing. I truly think that the most important thing that we can do to honor Micah is to show our support to her family in whatever way they need. They're grieving their daughter, their sister, trying to find purpose after Micah's tragic passing. Micah's law, of course, will not bring Micah back, but it will help protect others that are fighting a similar battle that Micah went through. And I think it's just one of the best ways that we can honor her, supporting her family and helping to push Micah's law into action. So definitely continue to share Micah's law, especially if you live in South Carolina, continue contacting your local representatives, demand that they listen, demand accountability, and do not let Micah's law be dismissed. Again, I'll share the PDF link in the description to this video. It has template letters that you can use to send to your state representatives. That is what we can do to help push this law and make it the reality. And again, if you're able to do so, donations are needed from the family to continue the fight for Micah. So make sure that you visit justiceformica.com to see where you can donate. I again will make sure to have that link in the description of this video as well. So like I said, it was five days ago that the Francis family shared that video thanking the community, trying to rally support for Justice for Micah. And so of course, the following day, John Paul made a video on TikTok requesting donations for Micah's Dare to Care missions in Africa. And I just found this video by John Paul extremely manipulative and tasteless. I should know by now, I shouldn't expect anything better from John Paul. Hey y'all, I was just sitting here looking at some um, pictures and videos, of course, of my wife and uh, couldn't help but come across all the ones have to do with the mission trips that we went on. I'm not a missionary. I don't like missions trips. I'm a teacher. Uh, I like to stay home and teach, but she loved the mission trips. And especially uh, when she went to Africa last year, when she came back, I picked her up at the airport and she was uh, overwhelmed with joy. And um, she came back, she said she wanted to start a school, a Faith First Academy in Africa. And I said, Micah, you can't do that. I said, that's not possible. We don't have the money. We don't have the resources. We don't have the teachers, the curriculum, the location, the place. We don't have it all. Well, that was kind of a challenge for her. And um, about a month later, she had the teachers, the location. She even had the lunch lady, someone who was going to bring these children food. And um, she brought me everything we needed. And she got it down to about $500 a child per year. And then I'm the good guy that's good with financial stuff. And so I was able to get it down to $300 uh, for a year for a child to go to school there. And that includes the food that they get. And now we have about 350 children begging and pleading for us to start our school back uh, in August of this year. And so we are sending a team and we're praying to God that we have enough uh, of what we need to be able to feed the 300 and something kids, uh, curriculum provided, teachers trained and everything. We'll send you pictures when it when, when we start, when it comes out. And, um, and if you go to uh, dare2caremissions.com, uh, you'll see our website and that's where Micah started, of course. And so uh, if you love Micah, you gotta love the people of Gibraltar because that was her uh, big thing that she enjoyed so much. Thanks. So one, I found it extremely disrespectful that the day after the Francis family made this heartfelt video about needing support and thanking the community for their support, JP would then go on and make his own video requesting donations from the public. Regardless of how, you know, John Paul feels about Micah's family, they're clearly grieving Micah and they're trying to honor her in the best way that they can. And I've said it before and I'll say it again, John Paul is not grieving Micah, or at least in no way does it appear that he's actually grieving her. I mean, I don't know, I, have I missed something, you guys? Have you seen any type of grief coming from John Paul? Because I really haven't. And it's clear that the Francis family is broken and just trying to pick up the pieces and so for john paul to release that video the day after theirs i don't think that was coincidence or by mistake so not only did i find that post extremely disrespectful to the family but i also found it very manipulative again that seems to be a trend with john paul he's so manipulative we saw how jp would hold the missions to africa over micah's head because he knew just how important and how much these mission trips meant to Micah and he knew that this was 
probably the best way that he could hurt her. And so he would hold this these mission trips over her head. We saw it in his email just how awful he was towards her in regards to this. So for him to come onto TikTok and use his platform to try and raise money on Micah's behalf for these mission trips when we saw him be so vindictive about them towards her, it's just it's so John Paul. I'm gonna read the email. Beware, if you haven't heard this email from John Paul before, it's extremely repulsive to listen to. So the email goes, Hey Micah, I hope that you are doing well. I'm ready to be done and move on and heal and find a first lady who won't treat me the way you are. I really hope you do great things. I was willing to do anything. I even had the amazing desire to have kids since you're not on meds. And I want to apologize for the flowers and fruit. It was already paid for to last until your birthday. Feel free to give it all away. I sent that to you before I found out all the things that I have recently found out about you and what you've done, and you disgust me. So please, let's meet soon and be divorced and let this nightmare be over for me. I'm enjoying all the Africa missions and Pastor Jumba and all of the pastor's wives are so excited for what we're doing. We expect 120 kids our first semester. I have about 10 to 12 people going this time, including Kristen and Tom Winslow and Becca and Jonathan, etc. And I need to move on ASAP. I need a woman who will respect me and love me and be worthy of all that being a first lady is about. Okay, the first lady bit, like, calm down. Can you not tell just how, like, chauvinistic and horrible John Paul was to even deal with? God bless Micah, seriously, I can only imagine. He knew what to say that would hurt her the most, and so he did use this against her. It was so oddly placed in the email, it didn't even make sense to include it. Clearly, it was just there only to hurt her. So now, why would he be pushing people to donate to the Dare to Care missions in honor of Micah when he was holding this over her head? You know, how incredibly deceptive of him to use Micah's name to try and raise funds on his behalf. And mind you, it was the day after the Francis family reached out to the community for support. So again, I don't think that was by any mistake. I think it was absolutely intentional. Also, not to mention, multiple sources have come forward and said that Pastor Jumba, who is in charge in Africa, has received zero dollars from John Paul from the money raised for the Dare to Care missions. So I, uh, I'm not, you know, I haven't seen like any legal documentation regarding this, but I have seen multiple sources coming forward saying that this is the case. One in particular being uh, Micah's mother. She shared this on her Facebook. Makes you wonder where that money is going and if it's really going to where he says. In Micah's mother's post, it says, I am Micah's mother. Please, please do not donate anything to the Dare to Care missions. It has been reported that all the funds raised for Kenya thus far have not reached Pastor Jumba there. So hold on to your gifts for now. We are working on making Micah's mission a reality. We just have to do things in order. You can read her story on our family page at www.justiceformica. Pray and seek God before you do anything. He will guide you. Thank you and amen. And then, of course, she shared these beautiful pictures of Micah, which I have to take a moment just to make sure that I share them as well because you can just see how much joy these mission trips brought her. Everyone should just take a moment and look at Micah in these pictures. But yeah, so you know, we've also heard rumors that the FBI is investigating John Paul and Solid Rock Church. And I have to wonder if it's in relation to the funds raised for this or just in general, if it's in relation to money and where money is going. That's all speculation. I don't have any, again, legal documentation of this. I will be interested to see if it comes out further down the road, but we have heard that the FBI is investigating him and his church. So I do wonder if it's about finances. And then also I, I wanted to just briefly touch on a few posts that were shared on the True Crime Re TikTok recently because I found these extremely distasteful as well. There have been some screenshots that she shared trying to put you know some of the blame on Micah's family. In particular, I feel like Micah's father for her death and I just don't I don't understand the motive. So this first screenshot is allegedly a message from John Paul to Micah's father, Michael Francis. And in the message, it's JP sending a mental health appointment 
reminder for Micah. And Michael responds with, oh, okay, say I would appreciate it if you stopped texting me. And then in the TikTok caption of this image here, it says, just why? Question mark. And so I definitely get what's being implied here on this TikTok post. Like Micah's father was disregarding Micah's mental health by telling JP to stop texting him. And I, I just do not see it that way at all. One, did these reminders not also go to Micah? I would assume that they probably already knew about this appointment. And JP was just trying to, you know, continue injecting himself into Micah's life. And then two, I'm trying to put myself in Michael's shoes. And if my daughter was trying to leave an abusive relationship and this abuser was actually texting me about her doctor's appointments, I probably would respond the same way. Honestly, I probably wouldn't have been even as nice as he was. You know, this message here, it in no way implies that they were not trying to, you know, manage Micah's mental health. It's just that she was an adult who did not want her estranged and abusive husband interfering in her life. That's what I take from this. And again, you know, if JP was legitimately concerned with Micah's mental health, you would think that he wouldn't harass her or share topless photos of her or, you know, text her sister that he's, quote, armed and ready when Micah wouldn't return back to him. That really just doesn't sound like somebody that was concerned for a person's, you know, mental health. And again, I just, I don't see Michael disregarding the idea of helping Micah with her mental health. I take it as, Michael didn't want to hear from JP, which totally understandable. And then the next series of texts that were shared on this TikTok are the following. So the first here is a text message from Micah and it reads, John Paul asked me to text you all just so we are all on the same page. I have decided to slowly taper off bipolar meds without telling my doctor and against John Paul's wishes. I would appreciate if you could regularly call me anytime just to check on me and for support. I have made other adjustments to help with the transition, such as no alcohol, no caffeine after 2 p.m., regular sauna and ice baths, much cleaner diet, and cutting out friends who are negative and add stress to my mind. I love y'all and I hope this doesn't stress anybody out. That's not my intention. And then her sister responded, well, I definitely want you to be safe about it, sis. I want to support you, but also maybe if you are gonna not have a doctor's supervision, maybe try to find a holistic doctor. There are definitely natural ways to battle dang near everything and I'm not 100% convinced it wasn't. And then conveniently the text message is cut off so we don't even get the whole the whole picture there. But honestly, when I read this text message, I felt like the wording was almost like a little forced from Micah. I don't know, like I kind of wondered if it was actually JP that typed this up. We do know that, you know, John Paul allegedly took Micah's phone, but maybe not. Maybe it was Micah. Regardless, I think her sister's response was very supportive and only really encouraged Micah to seek professional guidance if she was going to, you know, attempt tapering off these medications. And then this second message here that was shared is like a group text where um, Micah again is, says, I told one of y'all already that I was tapering off, but I don't remember who. And then her sisters kind of chimed in and said, you told all of us basically. And so again, it just sounded like supportive family members again. They said, as long as you're happy and healthy, nothing out of the ordinary or stood out to me there. And then this final message here, and before I read it, I should mention that the caption for this on TikTok was, quote, very questionable advice from dad to use THC products and then taper off of or deviate from prescribed medication plan. So that's what the caption for the actual message says on TikTok. And then the actual message reads this. It starts midway through the text, so we don't even get the whole picture again, but this is supposed to be from Micah's father. He says, quote, you may find half or a quarter of the dose to be best. I suggest extreme caution concerning THC products, flour. It only takes a little too much to really have adverse effects while on another medication, etc. Like Destiny was saying, it would be really good if you had some kind of holistic plan, which may include someone that you can be accountable to for how things are going. And then Micah responded, 
I've decided to wait until after the holidays to do anything so that I don't go through any withdrawals and ruin another Christmas, but many prayers, please. As of now, I feel great, so thank you for all the wisdom. And then her dad responded, great thinking. So I don't understand why the caption says what it says. I don't understand what they are trying to imply because in no way do I interpret this text messaging correspondence as you know a father encouraging their daughter to do THC in any forms or deviate from her meds to me it just sounds like a concerned father offering you know cautious advice I mean he literally says I suggest extreme caution I mean yes I know that the text message technically starts off with him saying you know cutting a dose into half or to a quarter but to me, this is just realistic. This is just real advice. If she was going to try something like an edible or some kind of other product that had THC, she's an adult or she was an adult and she could make those decisions. It's legal. I, I, don't, I honestly don't know offhand the South Carolina laws where I'm from here in Michigan, it's legal. Regardless, if she was going to do it, she was an adult, she could make that decision. So he was really just trying to tell her to heed caution. I don't see at all how this is him, you know, advising her to do THC and deviate from her medications. I think that's a very inaccurate representation of what it looks like was actually happening in this texting. So yeah, at the end of this, really what I'm saying is all I see is a concerned father that is trying to talk to his daughter and give her advice. And so I just thought that these posts on TikTok were just extremely tasteless and trying to paint Michael, the father, in a bad light when I think that was far from the truth. You know, when Micah was here on this earth with us, she was basically screaming for help and that she needed protection. And it wasn't to be saved from her family or her father or any of those parties. It was specifically one party. She was asking to be saved from John Paul's abuse. So we don't have to speculate on who was the abuser towards Micah. We know it was John Paul. We heard it directly from Micah and from her mouth. And we've seen multiple legal reports made by her to the police authorities if we just never saw any justice or she never saw any justice and so for anyone to try and spin the narrative that it was like micah's father to blame or micah's family to blame it's obviously false and it's also cruel in my opinion all we need to do is look to micah micah was telling everybody not subtly <laughs> she was very clear in that her abuser was john paul god hates divorce but why? According to everybody I've asked and the, the scriptures that I've found, it's because it hurts people. But does abuse hurt people? How do you think God feels about that? So I want to remind you, like a bunch of people have been reminding me lately, that I'm God's bride first. And even an earthly spouse who's a good spouse when they know that their bride is being hurt, just imagine what an earthly spouse does. What do you think your heavenly spouse does when you're the bride of Christ and he sees his bride going through abuse and hurt? What do you think he thinks about that? Again, I'm not blaming him for the specific unaliving event because I don't have the facts there to do so. I can see why people speculate, but that's not even ever been my intent. But I do believe that he abused her and terrorized her and stalked and harassed. And I think that Micah was crying out for help and I don't think she ever got justice. And it's, it's sickening that he never was held accountable for this. And so back to the true crime re TikTok, you know, I've gone back and forth on whether I think that the true crime re and John Paul are like affiliated. I never, I don't think that it, it is John Paul by any means. I think it is a separate party, but after what we've seen recently on her TikTok, I definitely do believe that they are affiliated. I think that it is someone that is probably close to John Paul and giving him a platform. I come back to what did Micah say? Micah said that John Paul was her abuser and we have proof of it. So I will believe Micah over any other parties ever. I know she's not here to defend herself on this earth, but we have evidence. So we don't ever have to wonder, we know. We know who the culprit was. All that to say, I 
I personally am not trusting of the TikTok account that JP is using for his platform. I do believe again that they are separate people, but I just think that this TikTok user, True Crime Re, is somehow in John Paul's corner. I'm curious to know what you guys think about it. I've seen some different opinions. I still stand by what I've said in the past and that I do think it's helpful to give JP a space to talk because any just trial does need to hear both sides. And in a sense, you know, John Paul is on trial with the public, so to speak. And so I think it is helpful that he has a platform that he can that he can share his thoughts even though they can be very very frustrating to listen to but i do think there is purpose in having him have this platform what i would like to hear from john paul i don't know that he'll ever do it but what i would like to hear from him is i would like him to take some accountability i'd like to hear him take any responsibility for the wrongs that he had done towards micah and how he mistreated micah i have literally never heard any type of humility or accountability come out of his mouth he gets all these opportunities to talk and carry on and he chooses the most irrelevant topics really to talk about i want to hear accountability from john paul and i think a lot of us do i think a lot of us want to hear him take some responsibility and how he mistreated her but i don't i don't think we should hold our breath because i have little faith in him doing so the justice system too it'd be great if the justice system would hold him accountable but again i don't have much faith in them either and that in itself is absolutely frustrating as well but the more that i hear in regards to the police departments that are associated with this such as the robeson county police department the connections that john paul has you know, the less faith that I have that the authorities will do the right thing and honor Micah and help bring justice for her. I did just see that John Paul is supposedly going to be doing an interview on TikTok. It's supposed to be like a two hour interview. It is going to be behind a paywall. It's supposed to go up tonight. So I did subscribe to this man's TikTok channel. There was a, a little bit of a fee with it. I'm hoping that I will be able to screen record it and then share it here with you guys and we can talk about it and go over it and kind of analyze because yeah let's let's see hopefully this tiktok user that is interviewing him holds him accountable a little bit and helps steer the conversation in a useful way because yeah i'd like to hear john paul talk about the things that matter talk about the fact that he stalked, harassed, and abused Micah, talk about the fact that he exploited her, talk about the fact that he held these Africa mission trips over her head and then tried to use her name to raise funding, talk about the fact that he was not faithful to Micah, what about the accusations of underage girls? I mean, let's address some of these real topics that matter. Hopefully, those will be talked about. We'll see. But like I said, I did subscribe and pay the fee so I can share it on here with you guys and we can hash it out here. But otherwise, I think that is going to be all for today's video. Make sure that you check the description in this video. I will share those templates so you can use those to send to your state representatives if you're in South Carolina. I'll also share the Justice for MICA webpage because remember, if you are called to do so and you are able to do so, continue to donate to the Francis family. I would recommend supporting the Francis family over anything that is affiliated with John Paul at this time. Of course, each of you get to make your own decision and use your own critical thinking in that area, but I know personally, I will continue to support the Francis family because I think that's what Micah would want. I think that's the best way that we can honor her. But otherwise, I wish you guys nothing but the best and I will talk to you very soon. Bye.